Good morning. Your Holiness, the last three days have been a feast both for the mind and the brain. And as a scientist, I can say that even though it was just a brief glimpse, a tremendously, a very tiny glimpse of our rich traditions, I was just overwhelmed by the richness of the tradition and the knowledge that we need to, as yet, as scientists, explore and understand. The, just to briefly recapitulate what we have done in the last four sessions, it start, the meeting started out with laying down the traditions of Hindu and Buddhist philosophy as articulated by Swamiji, Swami Atmapriyananda and Jhumpala. And it was followed by Ramprasad Chakravarti elucidating the challenges that we scientists face as we initiate this dialogue. In the second session, we unfolded the story of the wonderful collaboration that actually overcame some of the challenges that Ram Prasad initially discussed by the presentations from Richie Davidson and Matthew Ricard. This was followed by the, the brief presentations by Swamiji and Ram Prasad on the Advaita Vedanta traditions and the practices. And yesterday, of course, in the afternoon, we heard the Jain practice, the Preksha meditation, and the yoga practices, and some of the studies that have been done in India by Shirley Tellis, uh, Nagendraji, and of course, briefly, Dr. Gangadhar's work also on this yoga practices and the treatment of mental illnesses was presented by Richie Davidson, since Gangadhar could not be here. We now are assembled here today for the last session. Um, in this session, Your Holiness, we will be reflecting integrating and discussing about the future directions that we need to take this meeting and this dialogue to. Personally, interacting with the scientists who have been here during this meeting, uh, it was very evident that there is a tremendous interest from the scientific community in to engage in these dialogues. But Your Holiness, without your support and your involvement, we, this dialogue would not continue. You have not only been a catalyst, you have held us together, and we will continue to need your presence and your involvement and have several such dialogues with the Indian scientists if we truly have to not lose the momentum of this initiative and move this forward. Uh, we have wasted enough time in the last few decades that we have not done this, but now that we have started, I seek your help in moving this forward. In terms of future directions, one of the other things that came to my mind was uh, the MindLife Institute has shown us a successful model of such dialogues and interaction. It would be very helpful if some Indian scientists could attend summer research institutes that the MindLife uh, conducts every year. I understand the financial constraints that such an endeavor would involve, uh, but I'm hoping that we will be able to overcome this. Um, I always feel that it is important to identify the goal, and once that goal is identified, the path to the goal, the path to the goal will automatically unfold itself, and we'll find the resources and the means to do it. The, sec the last thing, of course, was that uh, I also hope that soon, we would be able to initiate these summer research institutes in India and bring together people. Um, it's only through in continuous dialogue and interaction that we can hope to build this kind of uh, uh, intimate collaboration and conversation between the two uh, domains, namely the contemplatives and the scientific traditions. Uh, with these few words, I would first like to introduce our panel. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Dr. Kapila Vatsayan, Kapila Ji, as we all fondly call her. Uh, it is very hard to describe. She's a scholar, an author, a linguist, a dancer, an ethnographer, an educationist, an art historian, and a cultural policy maker. But to us, she's dear Kapila Ji. Um, I just feel she's a resource of knowledge, and we have tried very hard to bring her here because I think it would be wonderful to hear and share what you have think about this meeting. Um, Dr. Wolfsinger, on the far right, 
a left. I'm a left-hander, and I'm always confusing my right and left hands, so pardon me. Uh, he's the president of the Max Planck Institute of Brain Research, and all of us have heard about him. And to my left again is uh, Professor Ramurthy. Professor Ramurthy is a nuclear scientist, uh, a renowned nuclear scientist, who for 12 years uh, headed the Department of Science and Technology of the Ministry of Science and Technology for the government of India. Uh, he has been instrumental in setting out several policies, radically new policies, to foster science and technology in India. And currently, he's a director of the National Institute of Advanced Sciences in Bangalore. And he, he has been, I've been interacting with him ever since this initiative has been being planned. And he's been a great source of support and encouragement. And I look up to him to give us directions on how to take this forward in the Indian context. Uh, to my right is Richie Davidson, professor from Madison, whom you all know, and Matthew Ricard, as he's known as the photographer, the biochemist, molecular biologist, <laughs> the Buddhist monk. So with these uh, introductions, I would now like to request Kapila Ji to share some of her reflections with us. Your Holiness, you have called me mother for many decades. <coughs> you have also said that the Tibetan tradition and you are chela of India. You have also said, both privately and publicly, that the Chela has done much better than the Guru. Now, since you are an, my Chela, and you have done much better than either the mother or the Guru, so I suggest that the son, the chela speaks, and the mother keeps quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, whether you call it an Indian, or you call it a universal tradition, once, wherever knowledge has been transmitted, an experience has been transmitted and known, then that experience must come from one who has been on this journey, both physical and spiritual, as I have known you, little that I have known you, for the long time that I have known you. And I think this audience would like to hear you rather than my squeaky voice. Your Holiness, before I request you to speak, I do wish to place before you not any kind of a summary which Viji has already given you, but whether from this discussion or from discussions not in confined space of a country or a tradition, the questions which the human mind has asked is about the existential reality, both external and more internal. And at that level, I think that any discussion or dialogue between what the human mind has divided into disciplines, because this is the division of the human mind in terms of considering that these are distinct disciplines. So my first question to you, Your Holiness, is that what is that moment from that undivided moment 
or that holistic moment about that you have used so many times, that division takes place. My second question is that our discussions here have been at, as I see it, from my very little understanding and colossal ignorance, is that the discussions have moved on different planes. The discussions have moved on the plane of first and foremost, what is this body? How do you... And that body which has a substance or an entity we called the brain, and that brain is responsible or is it the igniter or container or articulator <laughs> of something which civilizations and cultures have addressed themselves to in terms of a experience and b articulation in language and what is that process and does science then address itself to that moment or that process where the brain becomes is the re receptacle of the mind <laughs> I think this is the basic. And discussions, both at the empirical level of science and at the philosophic level, have occupied humanity for centuries, ever since the human being. My second question to you is, judging from the kind of presentations that we had, and as I said, it moves on many levels, was a scientific, what we call science, and I have a definitional problem on the word science in the English language, coming as it does from its etymology, from the Latin and the Greek source, which means cutting, <laughs> which means dissection. And all other words, in the traditions that we are speaking about, where it does not speak of dissection, it speaks of a holistic and a total comprehension. And that therefore, my second question is that Your Holiness, this whole endeavor, wonderful as it is, then when it comes into this, it is a question of the division that we spoke about in philosophic systems. And therefore, we spent wonderful time and we learned so much from different philosophic systems. And I want to make a distinction here between philosophic systems and religious entities. And I think that we got a little this way, that way, as I say as a dancer, between institutional religion and philosophic systems. And this came up repeatedly about religious denominations. We, and I think that that distinction has to be kept quite clear. Because the institutions of religion, whether in the West or the East or something, have a different complexion. And I think that our discussions have to stay clear. And therefore, my last question, before I request the very final, is when you speak about the secular ethics, which you have done so much, 
Secularism, in the, again, the English word secular has many problems. <laughs> it is culturally framed. It is historically framed. It is not a fundamental category at all. And therefore, in the cultural context, again, in these Indian traditions, there isn't a distinction of that kind which we are making either, and I now speak in my little, little capacity as also a parliamentarian, or, or the Constitution of India, because the word secular has certain in the cultural context, it has both problems and, and I'd like you to reflect. And finally, and finally, most of all, we've all spoken, we've heard and very, both at the level of experience and, and at the level of articulation, but we haven't heard you, Your Holiness to tell us about the Nalanda tradition, <laughs> which is where this dialogue started. And as you know, I don't have to tell you that that is where the Chela became the guru. <laughs> and that is where Naga and Yoga Chars and, mm, that, and so I'm sure that this audience would like to hear you on the Nagarjun tradition. And pardon the mother for speaking too much as usual. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, you see, uh, in order to understand this well, fully, no. you know. Oh. So, thank you, Mataji. Uh, your positive comment about secularism. Uh, usually, I have my own sort of understanding about secularism. So, now your explanation uh, creates a little shaky. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so I really see <laughs> now my understanding about secularism it just seems only half or something very rough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so in any way, uh, Madaji said, my commitment about promotion of secularism is no change. Till my death, I will <laughs> commit it. <laughs> <laughs> so indeed, our last few days, uh, I think our I don't know, a dialogue or scientists with scientists. Now this sort of occasion, something become very unique, very good. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, see the, uh, this really now shows the supermarket of different sort of philosophy, different sort of traditions, spiritual traditions. So really wonderful. Uh, and also I mentioned uh, this also may create more confusion. <laughs> so therefore, uh, the, also it's necessary to know the differences. So now Madhaji, uh, although this morning I felt, or oh, maybe uh, if it's pro for the appropriate yeah, okay. occasion come, I may explain about the, the basic sort of system of the Nalanda thinking. So now, uh, you perhaps Munshi Medo, Mola De. Solans was saying that maybe you have you are clairvoyant. I thought of this. Karza. Oh. Uh, so now, uh, my long-time friend and very, very, I mean, the, uh, intellectual and also dedicated, uh, never married, <laughs> isn't it? No, I did. Oh, <laughs> you really? Oh. And then, you see, they, she really devoted taking care of your own mother, mm. isn't it? Mm? Wonderful lady, wonderful lady. So I usually you see, describe the mother G. So now, very briefly, presenta the presentation of uh, when I say Nalin tradition, what is that? What is the meaning? I think firstly, the Buddha's uh, statement, oh my follower, big shoes, and others should not accept my teaching out of faith, and out of devotion, right. but rather your own investigation and experiment. Uh, so I think fact, this translation may be better. In fact, the citation runs as follows. Just as a goldsmith um, examines the quality of the gold through a process of cutting, burning, and so on, in the same manner, mm -hmm. Big shoes, uh, they should examine my words, subject them to uh, critical ex uh, examination and also personal experiment, and on that basis accept their validity. So that gives his follower liberty to examine even his own word, his own teaching. Uh, that's why. So therefore, the tradition evolved in Nalanda uh, tradition, um, the, the hermeneutic approach of uh, interpreting among the statements those that are provisional and those that are definitive. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and also, I think one of the key sort of uh, concept in Buddhism is and also the need to avoid uh, misconceptions leading to nihilism in the form of nihilism or in the form of absolutism. Nihilism is not a 
Rotteres. Although Rotteres. the word nihilist, nihilism might be understood in so many different ways, but the basic point is that any assertions um, that deny what is actually real, that is a one form of extreme. And any assertions that claim reality of something that does not exist, that is also another form of extremism. Uh, so that's why it becomes uh, important investigation, thorough investigation and experiment. Uh, so that's, I think, a tradition of Buddhism in general, and particularly Nalanda tradition. Uh, so when, uh, so this also, uh, I think, uh, tell us entire sentient being want happiness, satisfaction, joyfulness, uh, and all these goal come from action, not just accidentally, everything is due to its own causes and conditions. So here, related with sentient being, action is the key factor. That is, we call karma. So the action should be realistic action. Even if you want to uh, hit someone. <laughs> Your method should be realistic. Uh, uh, so, through realistic approach, you get uh, uh, what you want. Unrealistic method, uh, fail, bring satisfactory result. I think one recent sort of example both Saddam Hussein's sort of think, uh, policy, and uh, of course I have great admiration or uh, last yes. former sort of president, uh, the Bush. As a human being, very wonderful person. Uh, but you see, his approach, I think the motivation is good to eliminate dictatorship and bring democracy, freedom. But method, unrealistic method, both sides. I think unrealistic method, so fail. Uh, so even you see making one, uh, also the delicious tea, the approach must be realistic. <laughs> Just your wishful thinking will not bring taste feel because of tasty tea. tea. Mm? <clears throat> you need certain amount of water and some other tea leaf and sugar, milk, everything should be realistic. So every sort of thing, uh, even if it's walking, it must be realistic. Otherwise, you may fail. Uh, so everything should be realistic. Uh, now, including uh, say the transformation of our mind, also must be realistic. So therefore, uh, the, again, you see, investigation come important. And then on top of that, we must, uh, we must utilize in order to know the reality all different angles. Through one dimension, through one angle, we cannot get the full awareness about the reality. So we must look the reality through all sort of angles and all sort of dimensions. dimensions. So holistic. Uh, approach is important. That's why the concept of interdependency is come. Uh, reality, everything interdependent. So, in order to get more, I said, the realistic approach, realistic look, uh, we need more sort of wider perspective. So, that is the come the Buddhist idea of Patitsamupan. Interdependence, but it's some about interdependency. Uh, so then, uh, since realistic approach is important in any field, including Dharma practice, uh, uh, so the importance of logic comes. Same as you 
Sama din de usta dere digi pejir ngundu digi ne tudu ngeli digi bar didi semen de buri se digo For example, in the classical Indian Pramana texts, the text on epistemology, a statement is made that in actual fact, all the successful outcomes in our life, including in, in the immediate term up to the highest achievement of nirvana, all of these successful outcomes are in one way or another uh, fruits of uh, a knowledge, valid, valid cognition, a praman. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, so now, uh, in Nalanda sort of institution, one well-known sort of very sort of that really smart-minded sort of leader or professor of Nalanda, Nagarjuna, my favorite guru. Uh, uh, and his main disciple, Arya Deva. Mm -hmm. That is Nagarjuna ki disumbre. And it manzo ta deve digi la negu digi chik. Ting mandu digi. Thadu digi chik. Ting eli digi. Ni sunsha. So Nagarjuna in one of his texts speaks of, uh, in terms of our object of aspiration, there, there's the immediate object of aspiration, and then the final or long-term aspect of aspiration. The immediate object of aspiration is seeking um, excellence or worldly existence, um, and then the ultimate aim of existence, uh, um, object of aspiration, is the spiritual freedom, liberation. Uh, the, the, uh, Drupthap di sunyun di aryan dewe sunam member tamburun dao bardo daanyan dao barchi tamar daishi gyun dao barchi dijitini kebayin chi sun shabay dide shah So now given that these are the our objects of aspiration one is the happiness in the kind of immediate term the other one is the ultimate happiness of moksha or liberation then we find an Arya Deva's text uh, writing uh, uh, quite a succinct uh, presentation of the method of how to go about achieving these two aims or goals. And with there he talks about how on the initial stage the individual must refrain from all destructive you know, actions, non-virtuous actions. Uh, secondly, on the second stage the individual must uh, restrain from grasping onto the notion of strong self. And then, um, and then finally, in the final stage, the, the individual must uh, let go of grasping onto any forms of distorted views. Uh, so now, first level, uh, So now, with relation to the first uh, aim, which is the immediate term, happiness, there, you know, within the classical Indian tradition, we can speak of, again, two levels. One is the immediate happiness in this life, and the, the, the second one is the happiness in the future life. Now we hear the importance of secular ethics, no matter whether believer or non-believer, so long uh, anyone who wants happy life, happy community. So now here, the secular ethics related. Yes. Uh, uh, in order to gain a happy life, this very life. And that also the basis of preparation for uh, happiness. So, uh, so in also, you know, establishing happiness in this life also becomes the basis for having a better life in future as well. I remember that. Sendi mundu digi duyagi secular ethic di. Sichime mundu digi duyagi shidin shabes. Sorry, the, the secular ethics, which is the, the method by which 
we seek happiness in this life can also be seen as the very same method that can lead to happiness in the future life as well. I think our dialogue with scientists, I think mainly related with that level. We are not talking about next life. <laughs> but, uh, but you see, once we develop meaningful life, and not only happy uh, day by day, uh, but also, you see, that creates positive ground for a good next life. Uh, uh, even, you see, the concept of, you see, heaven, uh, the, uh, this life's conduct, positive conduct, with principle of moral ethics, uh, is the basis uh, because of that. Uh, method to reach heaven, isn't it? So that's why all religious tra tradition is it talking loving kindness, forgiveness, tolerance, self dis self discipline, discipline. All these things you see happen. Uh, so that's one level. Langarishi with the Allah. So, for uh, example, in um, Lanka Avatara Sutra, um, which is a descent to Lanka Sutra, uh, there is a reference to many vehicles, spiritual vehicles. And uh, so, one vehicle that is referred to is the vehicle of the humans. Um, and so, the secular ethics can be seen as being constituted by that. Uh, now about uh, the, the happiness or joyful, joyful life in future, uh, again main thing uh, is the restrain coming other. That's the main thing. As, the, 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 non right. the, as uh, we pointed out in uh, Arya Deva's text, yeah. The, I mean, the uh, non virtues uh, act like uh, ten, ten non-virtues, obviously, uh, that also is common, all religion. Even, you see, the according to law, also, you see, these are considered, because of the wrong thing. Uh, killing, <laughs> whether, whether believer or non-believer, must be recent killing. <laughs> then stealing. Uh, if, we, if we commit that, you see, we have to go to jail. Uh, then, uh, sexual misconduct or abuse, uh, rapes like this. Also, you see, the, even the ordinary law is because of the wrong thing. No. Uh, then telling lie, uh, uh, divisive speech, uh, uh, harsh words, um, a kind of uh, a frivolous, you know, uh, senseless gossip. And also, you see, I think main nakel the chadang kunelang page page dawatasyo. So the 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 senseless gossip that is being referred to here is the one that is motivated by strong forms of attachment and aversion and hostility. So these, if you use common sense, these are wrong. Hmm? So not religious sort of sort of practice. It's common sense. These are harmful to, this, to oneself, to the family, you see, to the sort of society, like that. Uh, then, nafsim nafsim lokta. Then, uh, covetousness, harmful intention, uh, wrong views. Wrong view, now according one's own sort of view. Religious, religious sort of view. Religious yes, you can say, you can have, you see, the lokta. So, 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 so so here, wrong view, how you define something to be wrong view may differ according to one's own philosophical standpoint. So then, the uh, Buddha state, you see, the suffering, uh, in, in suffering, dukkha, three levels. Suffering of suffering, suffering of change. Right? And, and so, conditioned, su suffering of conditioning. Uh, so now this mainly deal with first level of suffering. suffering. Now, second level of suffering, uh, which worldly sort of pleasure, essentially suffering nature. 
So now, in order to overcome that, now practice of samadhi now involved. ตั้งสามเดือนก่อนตั้งสามเดือนรู้จักไหมคำคงกีตั้งสามเดือนรู้จักไหมคำคงกีตั้งเดือนพิจารณาที่เรามีชีวิตจริงตั้งเยอะต
That's the thing. One to be at the Nelly to be at Nigalotti, Tangent Revolution with Tower de Tone, Yonde. So, in brief, the attainment of both these aspirations, the, the short term aspiration of happiness and the long term aspiration of spiritual freedom, uh, um, both, of the, both of these are really dependent upon uh, cultivating an outlook, philosophical outlook that is based on appreciation of the interdependence of everything. Pratita Samubhata. Jundregi Tenjung Tavatane Lander Lambert. So, for example, it is on the basis of understanding and incorporating the, uh, the view of dependent origination in terms of cause and effect relations, then the um, the, the deeper understanding of the law of karma uh, comes, which then helps one restrain from negative actions and lead an ethical life. Uh, I mean, logically, uh, any sort of negative thing which, do not, we, which do not. we do not want, that also comes due to its own causes conditions. So since we do not want that result, so we must avoid the, cause. the causes uh, conditions of that. Uh, between causes and condition, cause are main sort of the cause. Factor. No. Factor. So if uh, you restrain, uh, uh, create cause, then even conditions there, uh, it may not create the negative result. So positive also is as well. Uh, uh, so now our work actually on a secular sort of basis, the, uh, the scientific sort of research now showing more compassionate mind, more calm mind, immense benefit to one's own health, and also, you see, the uh, immense benefit to the kasoda, uh, more, more kasoda, peaceful society. All these the disturbances ultimately come from mind, come from emotion. So dealing with emotion uh, is the ultimate sort of method to, to reduce these unhappy events. Uh, it cannot sort of bring, it cannot eliminate these unhappy, unhealthy things by force. Former Soviet Union, I think, utilized uh, as a maximum way, and also the people of China and also North Korea, I think, use the, the, the tight yes. method, but full of corruptions. <laughs> <laughs> so self-discipline. Self-discipline uh, comes only once you see the result or benefit. If I restrain harming sort of the, uh, action, I get benefit. If I do harming sort of action, ultimately I will suffer. Out of understanding that, then self-discipline comes. So everybody, you see, is selfish. Yes? Uh, but I usually call selfish should be wise selfish rather than foolish selfish. Mm -hmm. uh, due to lack of the fact, lack of sort of understanding. Kasoda, lack of the understanding, uh, the understanding, fact. understanding of the fact, and we all carry unrealistic method through, through that state. Uh, selfish, uh, blind selfish, foolish yes. selfish. Knowing the reality and the long-term interest, uh, then sometimes you just, it, it need a little sacrifice for immediate sort of interest, interest. in order to gain long-term permanent happiness. So, uh, so, then second level, in order to remove the self-grasping sort of the wrong view. Now here you see we have some differences. <laughs> My spiritual brother, uh, non-Buddhist. Uh, now the question of uh, s s view of s self, sort of independent, uh, uh, even though it's a small self or big self, uh, still that big self there. So the, in the individual small self because we completely dissolve Dissolved. in the big self. The big self is still there, so it might develop attachment towards that big soul, big self. Big self. Uh, 
So we must see develop the selfless on all levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is the the Nalan the sort of master sort of viewpoint. Yeah. Uh, so in any way, kaza adi chigi bini. Now, tinde ki ta taaru zimba di seya di wrong view di seya di right view. Right view karis lau na tinde ki tenjung seaji. Yebe inte zane devu di yul tende yari tinde yinte. ดูตุงเงินมีตัวแต่เดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวยินดูดีดูกี่จุดเดี๋ยวหลังต่อชาวเรศดิเชะงูตุรุยาดิจังนะเอ่อตายาโกซ้
So, then it will be a thing that is a thing that is a thing that is a thing that is a thing so, in fact, uh, it is only this level of understanding of dependent origination or interdependence and relational nature of things that will help us deal with the grasping at some notion of objective, intrinsic existence out there. Mm. So, this is in the... In the so this is the, in, the, in the context of Nagarjuna's teaching, the primary method for attaining individual liberation. Uh, so now in relation to seeking the universal uh, liberation for the benefit of all beings, uh, since that altruistic motive is the main driving force, um, therefore it, it requires on the part of the person to have much greater understanding of the needs and the context and so on of helping other sentient beings. Therefore, uh, in addition to the afflictions, one also needs to overcome uh, all the subtle imprints and dispositions of obscurations that the mind may, may possess. So, that's the reason that this is the reason that the reason is the reason that the reason is the reason that the reason so, sorry. So, in relation to the, you know, kind of dealing with the grasping itself, um, the, it, it is as explained. Uh, you need very powerful wisdom, wisdom which understand. Uh, absence of independent existence. Now, in order to gain sort of very, sort of that, very sound experiences, you need single pointed mind, sort of mindful mind, no. mind. mind. That is samadhi. Uh, in, in order to practice that, you need tenshikuto. So, you need a very uh, strong uh, faculty of mindfulness and meta awareness. Oh, the, the, so initial sort of the, so the, practice. Uh, way of practice or increasing these is self-discipline. That's what you want. And this is where morality comes into the picture, or ethical discipline. Uh, so up to here, uh, the uh, sans Sanskrit tradition as well as the Pali tradition is exactly, same. almost exactly the same. same. Uh, and your presentation, uh, Mainly, you see, for noble truth, or uh, on, on that on that part. Now, Tamatashi Kundo was said, Tamatashi Kundo was said, Delia, that Nalanda Rangata tradition, Jenny, the Shavi, not the Shendu. The Tamatashi Kundo was said, eh? You, you run she, teach me, she was thank you, Michova. You think it, thank you. Namdo Yoji Yidi That So going back to Arya Deva's four uh, lines, he says, in the end, one must let go of grasping to all views. Um, so here, um, His Holiness was saying that as he would understand that it is at that stage, it's not enough simply to have the correct understanding of the view of Anatman. But in fact, one must also have a deeper understanding of the very nature of mind itself, the subjective experience. And here, um, uh, the, the teachings of Vajrayana becomes relevant. Uh, so, uh, 
So here, for example, in order to fully, in order to fully understand the deeper meaning and, and the whole implications of the teachings on the Buddha nature, Tathagatagarva, the essence of Buddhahood, um, one has to take into account the perspectives of the Vajrayana uh, tradition. So, um, if we present if we present the path purely in terms of non-Vajrayana tradition, then one speaks of the the five paths and the ten levels. So this is this process is captured in the famous mantra, which is at the end of uh, Heart Sutra, Tatiyata, which means it is thus, Gati uh, Gati, you know, gone, gone, gone beyond, and gone, uh, and and uh, ground in in the uh, experience of enlightenment. Uh, uh. So they're Lama Chapter. So these are correlated to the five stages of the path. Uh, so once according to the sorry, according to the uh, the Nalanda tradition, once the individual has gained direct realization of the truth, emptiness, then from that point onwards the ten levels of the Buddhisattva Bhumi or Buddhisattva stage comes into the picture. Oh. Mayana, Sutriyanas, the way of explanation, or way of the path. path no. mm. uh, of course, the big one is the tremendous sort of enthusiasm uh, to serve others, uh, to develop immense sense of concern, of well-being, of infinite sense of being. Uh, and in order to do that, Firstly, you yourself should have some kind of ability. Otherwise, you can't do. Uh, so it is required uh, to sort of gain more sort of what's a day, more energy, more wisdom. So that's enlightened state, stage. that's Buddhahood. So now in order to serve uh, infinite standard being, the, you should acquire certain your own qualification. Capacity. No, capacity. 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 So that we call buddhicitta. Shandundu changju tendunyawa. So this is awakening mind or buddhicitta which seeks, to, which aspires to attainment of enlightenment for the benefit of others. So that mind is uh, really immense helpful. Of course, I have no sort of complete sort of experience. But I have keen interest, and in, as I, I think the other day I mentioned, my daily main practice is cultivating the infinite altruism, and with help of understanding of the ultimate reality. How it helps means the realization or understanding of ultimate reality, then you can feel the root cause of suffering, ignorance, can be eliminated. So once you, at least you get some kind of feeling about the possibility of elimination suffering, then enthusiasm comes. Otherwise, it's just wishful thinking. Pray, 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 pray. Nothing happened. <laughs> so, so that's the way. Uh, so the practice of a meditation of Shunyada and a meditation of Bodhicitta, these two things are, are extremely useful. Uh, uh, so that's my main practice. So I can assure to you, if you make some sort of effort on a daily basis with fuller picture of these things, you can transform your mental state. Uh, uh, not within one day or within a minute, <laughs> it may take eons, but at least you see the, the joyful life then begins. Stop.
uh, if that start, there is no one who is a young person, and the young person is a young person, and the young person is a young person. So um, then you can get a sense of strong courage, for example, as expressed in uh, Shantideva's uh, Bodhicharya Avatar, where he says that uh, thus overcoming all forms of weariness, uh, one should um, ride the horse of Bodhicitta, awakening mind, and travel from a place of joy to another place of joy. And what discerning person wouldn't want to embark on such a journey? <laughs> So then those prayer, is so long space remain, so long sentence being remain, I will remain in order to serve. Oh, this is not empty word, but some kind of enthusiasm, voluntarily. Uh, that really brings inner strength. And also, according, of course, I never say I have these sort of sort of, realization. sort of realization. No, never say, I never say. Uh, I never use the uh, as a pretend I'm a holy person or some great practitioner. No, 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 never. Uh, but at least I have some, I think my experience is a little above zero. <laughs> <laughs> so even that, very, very helpful. When I feel it's a little bit tired, but I, when I feel oh, some useful, some meaningful day, then the tiredness immediately is gone. Very, very helpful, very helpful. So I think much better become billionaire, right, in, of, then, then, be, then, become, then billionaire. become a billionaire. Billionaire, much worry. I think much stress, isn't it? This kind of the uh, experience, of, the mental thinking, yeah. you know, slight experience come, really makes you different. Wonderful. So please, don't concentrate wholly on money. <laughs> Think about our inner value. Very important. Now, that's the end. So, that's the end. 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 So uh, earlier I explained that it's not simply adequate to have a kind of an understanding of the ultimate nature of reality about the objective world, but also it is important to have a deeper understanding of one's own subjective experience and particularly understand how thoughts arise in us and, how, um, and, and find a way in which these conceptual thought processes can be calmed down and, and explore are there methods in which, by which we can bring about the cessation of these kind of conceptual thought processes. So here, um, you know, the, the, the explanation on how the consciousness during the waking state and the dream state and the deep sleep states differ. And what this suggests is that the fact that we have different states of consciousness in our existence indicates there is a levels of subtlety in our experience of consciousness. Uh, I, think our, I think everybody has this sort of experience. In dream, it's just some sort of... Sort of uh, experience, anger, or sort of what they, uh, compassion. Then uh, after you Kasura, wake, up. wake up, still some sort of uh, Impact. Kasura, Impact. impact. Mm -hmm. Even though you know, just dream, mm -hmm. but still some effect. Mm. So that, that shows a little bit subtler sort of mind the impact on our whole view, quite strong. So therefore, the Nagarjuna stated, according to Guhisamanza, on based on Guhisamanza, Nagarjuna concluded, Shiduji Kusum. Shiduji Kusum Seatele, Seduji Kusum. Niduji, that's not Seduji Kusum. Niduji Kusum, Chiduji Kusum Seatele. 
So, um, therefore, in Nagarjuna's text, he actually speaks of these yeah, three. Nagarjuna, Rima, Arya Devi, Judu. So, this is, for example, in the text called The Five Stages by Nagarjuna and uh, Arya Deva's Compendium of Practices, in which they speak of these three, not only there are these three stages of consciousness. <laughs> So, and these explanations are made, for example, in, in the context of result, you know, uh, with one speaks of the, dharma, the three embodiments of a fully enlightened being, Dharmakaya, um, um, Sambhogakaya, and Nirmanakaya. And on the path, there is a corresponding equivalence of these three uh, kayas. And in the ordinary state, you have the dream, uh, sorry, the waking state, the dream, uh, the deep sleep state, and also at the t- uh, point of death, s- during which you have different uh, states of consciousness. So he clearly sort of, uh, sort of explained the relation. There are some similarities. So he just is given the name, is the three kayas in daily basis, and three kayas when you gain some sort of experience, mm-hmm. deeper experience. Then final sort of Buddhahood. So that's a Tantrayana. So the main method is uh, a sort of dissolution of grosser level of mind. In order to dissol- uh, dissolve. dissolve grosser level of mind, you see, the technique is uh, try to shiva yojik lung So the technique involves trying to reduce the force of Vayu, which, you know, give rise to the proliferation and activity of the mind and thoughts. So here, you see, the yoga practice also involve uh, the breathing control or all these. Uh, although I learn these things, but I'm la- rather lazy, so occasionally I do, otherwise I, I don't, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> Not on daily basis. Right? No, no, no. In any way, uh, through that way, now they utilize innermost a subtle sort of that, consciousness. Uh, consciousness or clear light. That transforms into wisdom. That's a very, very powerful antidote. All the negative sort of that, uh, emotions. emotions. And emotions. Uh, imprints of the afflictions. So then, finally, uh, achieve Buddhahood. That's the, the the practice of Nalin tradition, the, 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 the Hinayana, I mean, the Pali tradition, Sanskrit tradition, and Bandarayana tradition. And simultaneous practices remain, uh, become a bhikshu, so practice of Hinayana essence, then some samadhi and these things. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, the practice of Bodhicitta and practice of uh, compassion. Uh, 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 universal compassion. Uh, no, 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 shunyata. shunyata. And then on top of that, visualization of deity and mandala. So that's all these three kayas, well, three, three yanas, 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 simultaneously practiced on daily basis. So that's the kasoda, uh, kasoda, the essence uh, of it. The, the essence of it. Yeah. Uh, that's the essence of the Nalanda approach, yeah. Nalanda tradition. So that's my presentation. Now I fulfill <laughs> my mother's <Jesus> instruction. <laughs> okay. I really sorry. That much time consumed. Thank you. Sorry. No, thank you, Your Holiness. It was indeed very enlightening for us, I think. And I'll now request Dr. Wolf Singer to give his remarks. Your Holiness, I will be very, very short. I think there is very little to be added after this profound analysis. Um, I think we have returned to the roots here in India of, of one of the great systems that try to understand the world. But it is not the only one. There are other ones, there are other belief systems, there are other techniques. And as you said, in order to recognize reality as it really is, you have to look at different perspectives. And what you do in order to explore your mind and you try to see it from different perspectives 
we now, I think, have to do it at a global level, where we see those different systems come together or still exist in parallel. But we have to take their perspectives, respectively, and see what they see, and try to find out whether we... I think we have the strong belief, otherwise we wouldn't come together, that there is only one world which can be looked at at very different angles. And you sometimes come to different conclusions about the nature of the world. If there is only one world, then there must be a synthesis. And of much of what you said... Synthesis. Uh, there, yeah, there must be a common denominator yes, yeah. to, to which we finally will all be able to agree. If this is not the case, then... Well, that's kismet, fate. Uh, then it was not well done. Uh, the whole system. It's not our fault. <laughs> but le let's hope that it is like that. And then, I think we have an equivalent in the West to what you consider um, secular ethics. And this is humanism, which is also a philosophical construct yes. that is transreligious, tries to get away with the religious idiosyncrasies, and much of what the humanists are saying right. is conform with what, what you postulate. So I think there is, below the level of individual religions, a way to communicate. Mm. And we should get those scholars together, rather than representatives of, of the different churches yes. and sub-churches yes. and so. But what we need is a translation system. You, because of your internal explorations have created a reality that is not present in the West. We have no words for it, we have no experience with it, so we need translators <laughs> who are at home in both worlds and can find the bridging theories between those, those experiences and then see how far we get. I think we are at the beginning of something and um, I wish us all that this will be successful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll now request uh, Richie Davidson. And Thank the last you. word will be from Dr. McMaster. Thank you. I, I will be very brief as well. Uh, Your Holiness, this was, uh, I think, uh, uh, a pivotal meeting for us together for Mind and Life. Uh, as you know, we held a meeting in Europe uh, in April in Zurich, uh, and you have requested uh, a meeting in Asia for many, many years. And we thought about Japan and other Asian locations, and uh, when you initially suggested Asia, we never envisioned having a meeting in India. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, meeting here has been so important and meaningful uh, since, uh, as you have so uh, beautifully articulated, the Nalanda tradition really has its strong roots here uh, and has been so influential uh, in our own thinking. And as part of that tradition, uh, you have uh, been such a forceful advocate for uh, uh, incorporating science in the monasteries to broaden the training of uh, young monks. And I think that going forward, uh, we need to think about uh, the implications uh, of what it is that we've considered at this meeting. And I look forward to the day when the um, academies of higher learning here in India uh, places like the Institute of Advanced Study in Bangalore and other such prestigious institutions, and also institutions in, in Europe and the United States that are comparable, um, follow your lead. And uh, in our case, uh, to teach contemplative traditions and practice within the intellectual institutions, uh, to complement uh, your aspiration to have science taught in the monasteries. And I think that uh, this is something that will be so important going forward. Uh, one of the um, uh, other, uh, I think, amazing opportunities that we've learned about here in India is that there are already uh, 
applications of teaching contemplative practice, for example, in education. Uh, we've learned uh, while we were here about wonderful programs going on here in Delhi in the embassy school and, and elsewhere in India. None of these programs currently have research that is actually evaluating the impact of these programs. And I think that there is a, a wonderful opportunity that has been catalyzed by this meeting to encourage research, uh, which will help to establish these programs in a more substantial way and broaden their impact throughout India as well as throughout the world. And I think that India can really become a model for how this might be done. Uh, I also uh, can envision joint visits of government funding agencies. In the United States, there's a component of the National Institute of Health that is providing uh, important funding for meditation research. Uh, and I think that going forward, I can envision those uh, groups coming together with, with similar groups in India uh, and elsewhere in the world. Uh, and finally, um, uh, I think that uh, uh, we have operated on the conviction that health is not simply the absence of illness, that well-being is something more than just the absence of disease. Uh, and uh, mind and life, I think, can be a force in the world for, the, for scientifically based promotion of real well-being, genuine eudaimonia. Uh, and uh, I very much look forward to the time in the near future when mental training is regarded in the same way as physical training or physical exercise is today. And I think, Your Holiness, you've been such an inspiration in helping to move that agenda forward. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Richie, for thank you, Richie, for articulating it so beautifully. I now request uh, Matthew. Yes, also myself now I spend <coughs> 40 years in the Indian subcontinent, more than in my country, and one that I will ever spend in my country. So I also feel like an Indian shella. And uh, just two small points uh, that I take from our few days together. And about the secular ethics, if some people feel uncomfortable, you know, sometimes we speak of universal values, but universal is a little bit also a sort of vague. So you all in us often speak of fundamental levels of humanity. So fundamental ethics is about what? You often say, fundamentally, I'm a human being. Then, in my case, I'm a born in France, then I became a Buddhist monk in the Tibetan tradition. All those are superimposed level, but fundamentally I'm a human being. So fundamental ethics evokes the value that pertains to all human beings, and even, I would say even more, to all sentient beings, because if we have to speak about ethics, we cannot ignore the well-being and the suffering of other species as well. So it's really this aspect of fundamental ethics can be commonly shared without any idea what secular means, of, as opposed to religion. It's about fundamental value of what, this, what all sentient beings are aspiring to. Now, the second small remark is about science. People say science goes well with spirituality or not. Are they antagonists? So it's all about what we mean by science. And your holiness, you have said that the Buddha said that we should examine his teachings and we should examine reality like examining gold by rubbing melting, beating the goal to see if the goal is pure. So that's really the purpose of science, open, pragmatic, pr investigating mind. So the only thing that could differentiate is the domains of investigation. So it is true that natural science have mostly looked to the outside world, but they also have to look at the very fabric of reality with physics and quantum physics. Now psychology is also looking at the inner workings of the mind. So it is true that the Classic Indian tradition have put an extraordinary emphasis on understanding reality from the subjective perspective, from the phenomenological perspective, both what it means of reality in terms of how sentient beings perceive reality according to the way their consciousness is, and to understand the ultimate nature of mind. But the rigorousness, the honesty, the logic, the reasoning that goes uh, behind that investigation it definitely can be scientific in the sense of a rigorous pursuit of truth. So it, of course, not goes well with 
blind faith, with presupposition, and so forth. But a more deeper definition of science, there's no such conflict. And I think in that sense, we can keep that in mind, that we are all empirically looking for a reality and a better understanding of which, which will help us not only to expand our knowledge, as you mentioned, but also to contribute to society on our personal part to flourish and possibly and hopefully some point to achieve enlightenment. <laughs> His Holiness, Matthew Ricard has synthesized everything so beautifully. <laughs> and now the last remarks will be by Professor Ram Murthy. His uh, Holiness, uh, the Dalai Lama Ji, distinguished uh, panelists, ladies and gentlemen. I am a hardcore scientist. I must thank the organizers particularly the Mind Life Institute, for giving Niaz the opportunity to join you and co-sponsor this particular event. Understanding the mind has always been a challenge to the humanity, for maybe since time immemorial. In the past, the traditional scholars have been looking inwards. That's the only way of investigating the mind and understanding. Knowledge generation is always in, coupled with inward looking. Modern science has been looking from outside. This is the one which has differentiated the modern science and the traditional science. It is unfortunate that the two systems have not been complementing each other, but actually have been looking at with a little bit of distress. And there are reasons for uh, this kind of distress. Of course, lack of understanding of the holistic manner, and more importantly, the way in which modern science had developed. Modern science over the last 400 years or 500 years have been developing on the basis of observe and analyze. If you can't observe, then it is not uh, true knowledge. Mm. And uh, there is also an, another underlying assumption that the observer has nothing to do with the observing process. Mm -hmm. So, if the same experiment is repeated in 10 different places by 10 different people, it must give the same result. Now, this has, uh, this has created a situation that... This has created a situation that any, anybody who doesn't follow this is not necessarily doing the right thing. And that's one of the reasons for the distress. The second reason, in my view, for the distress is Last century had brought a series of sophisticated instruments, thanks to science and technology. To such an extent, the instruments have become more important. And if you don't use that instrument, you are not doing the right thing. So this is another reason for this uh, distrust. From the other side, as was mentioned earlier, the traditional knowledge system has got somehow coupled with the religious systems. The knowledge system does not imply religion, but unfortunately the common man thinks the religion is the one which goes with it. I always say, for example, when we were young, if you want to go to a Yunani doctor, you must be a Muslim. Now we understand that uh, that's a medical system. It's nothing to do with what you do in the prayer room or inside the house. But uh, there, was, there was association, close association, which has also created a problem. I'm glad you said that today we need to look at uh, uh, beyond the religions in one holistic manner. Well, there are good signals. This distress is slowly giving way to trust for various reasons. One of them is, of course, the scientists themselves are understanding, the modern scientists are understanding that the um, observer observation separation is not complete. Uh, the world is not uh, deterministic, it is probabilistic. And uh, if you don't understand something, it does not mean it is wrong. So this is one real realization of uh, 20th century science. The second, of course, is... Um, 
Second, of course, is the recent development in uh, neuro, neurosciences. Mm. Dr. Vijayalakshmi is here, Dr. Ulfinger is here. They, they are definitely telling us that, yes, you may be almost right when you say the brain is a big computer, but that's not the end. The brain to mind uh, journey is far, far more than what we understand now and it is not possible to characterize everything in terms of uh, the material world alone. You know, at one time people used to say, human being is 80% water, 20% organic materials like oxygen, hydrogen and uh, nitrogen and a little bit of trace elements thrown in. We know very well this is uh, stupid, yeah. this is not right. And uh, we, if you want to create, if you want to create life as such, we don't have all the ingredients in hand. This also made uh, has made the modern scientists a little more humble than what they were maybe 50 years before. And um, this. Now this trust which is being uh, built over the last few decades, I'm glad uh, events of the type which is taking place now is trying to mobilize the two communities together and build on the trust so that each benefits from the other's developments. In particular, I am definitely of the view that while we need to uh, disentangle the functional religious uh, dogmas from the fundamental knowledge about the human beings, it's also important that the developments which are taking place in the modern science in terms of instruments and methodologies, uh, it should be made available to the community of uh, the uh, knowledge seekers at the fundamental level. I have, I have a few specific suggestions to make. Yes, it is important that the gurus meet and discuss among themselves what is common between them. But it is not enough if this knowledge does not disseminate to the uh, not so uh, senior people, particularly the younger people, mm. because they are the ones who are going to make tomorrow Yes. Uh, the, the, not the people of today. Yes. We need to bring and send this message into the younger community much more. Yes. Yes. You don't see them here, not many of them. <laughs> so my yeah. first requirement, I believe, is uh, that meetings of this kind have to take place on a regular basis in different locations, in yes. different institutions, yes. and uh, the message should spread around that don't look at it in isolation, but look at it in a holistic manner. Dr. Vijayalakshmi is mentioning this, that we need to build the events of this type much yes. more yes. than what is happening today. Sure. Well, any event of this kind costs money. So if somebody has to go to some place and give a lecture, they will say, where is the resource? I remember in Department of Science and Technology, we used to have a theoretical physics seminar circuit. Some money is kept aside. If anybody has said something to say, and if anybody is interested in listening to him, mm. then scheme allows him to go there and make. Only one condition, you will not go to one place and come back. You will go to five places and come. Five lectures you must give. Mm. I think we must build a similar circuit like this in mind and life uh, area, where people I like Vijay Lakshmi can go and talk. She will listen to with respect. <laughs> and sometimes a little bit of fear. But, <laughs> but I think she should have an opportunity to go and interact with the youngsters. And youngsters should have an opportunity to call her and say what's happening and why is it happening this way. Mm -hmm. The second aspect is, um, um, okay, you know, nowadays social networks are becoming very popular. You, you, the social networks are there for any community of people. I'm not aware of a social network for the mind and life institutions, uh, uh, scientists. Uh, Yes. Make use of modern technology yes. to build that network when you are not close by, you are thousands of miles away, but you are still together yes. in, in your mind. I think we must make use of the modern technology 
to build this uh, and enlarge this uh, network. Of course, if you want to do research in this area, it again costs money. And uh, generally, when you go to a funding agency, particularly if it is in the government, because I have been with the government for 40 years, uh, first question is, what are the deliverables? What do you deliver? What do you give back in return? And nowadays they say, what is your contribution to GDP? <laughs> right? Contribution. And across the world, people talk about Millennium GDP. Development Goals. No, no, look at these two terms, Millennium Development Goal and GDP. Does it ensure that the individual on the road will be more happy when the GDP is more? Does it ensure that if you give two dollars a day, that will make him the most happiest man on the face of the earth? It doesn't. I've been asking some of my colleagues, can we add a component to GDP which does not relate it relate to the money which he carries home, but his state of mind doesn't exist today. Is it enough to give two dollars a day to make a man happy in Africa? No, something more needs to be done. And what is that more and how do I quantify? Does not exist. So effectively, these questions are not being asked. And there are no answers. Now, government system depends on these numbers. So if you go and say, I'm going to look at uh, mind and life uh, cross-cultural uh, research program. Uh, it may not be very easy to get money. So we need uh, support from people like you and others who are in uh, who are in a position to influence to generate answers for such questions. How do I quantify the human happiness happiness index, if you want to call it? <laughs> and how do I convince the government that you have to invest in this? Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. your GDP will grow, your problems will increase too, along with it. And we are seeing it already. Already I do see some. Today, if I ask somebody, else, why are you looking at contemplation? I mean, contemplative science or uh, cognition science? Rajesh Kasurangan is sitting here. I have to justify why do I pay salary to him? I always say, well, you don't understand. That's why you have problems in Middle East. You have problems all over the world. You have, if you understand the mind, many of these problems would have disappeared. Right. So you have to invest. This argument had to be taken forward so that there is a much larger interest of the decision makers on issues of this kind. These are some of the random thoughts which uh, came to my mind. As I mentioned to you, I am a hardcore scientist, but I am not a blind hardcore scientist. I also <laughs> think that other things. So I am... <laughs> I once again thank the MindLife Institute for giving us an opportunity to be with you in this journey and I assure you that we will continue to be with you in this journey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Ramurthy. I would now request His Holiness to just give some final remarks. Huh, nothing, nothing to say. Uh, I think one thing might show. I think this this kind of sort uh, of discussion, uh, I think, should continue. And as you mentioned. It's in different places, and if possible, eventually some university mm. organized, and many students or graduates as well. Graduates. Uh, I think that's very important. Uh, then also possibly some media people, uh, also media media people, uh, also I think I think good to 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 inform public uh, what is the sort of value. What is this the meaning, right? Yeah, purpose. Uh, and also now, uh, I'm quite sure uh, my sort of old, long-time friend, the scientist, uh, I think now uh, surely they realize uh, India also is a some kind of that. Potential. Uh, potential. Mm. And the atmosphere itself mm -hmm. is something kind of that, very favorable. Yeah, the cultural uh, atmosphere. Uh, So then, how to proceed these things? I don't know. Those, those people who have experience, now you should do. I don't know. 
whenever you see my blessing or my support need, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm disposal of you. Oh. <laughs> so whatever you see, you, you carry some sort of a uh, plan. Right. Hmm? I, will, I, I will be because of that. Support, I'll oh. support. I always there. Uh, it's my duty to support, to serve, to serve. And if you want, you see, uh, 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 the, what is it, uh, more money, then don't ask me. <laughs> 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 of course, you see, a uh, few millions in the rupee that I can, I can, uh, I can provide you. <laughs> then cross, cross, that difficult. <laughs> That's all. Good. I really appreciate the, all the participants, uh, and especially those uh, the participants who first attended this meeting, including you, and you, and my mataji. You see, they really, I appreciate you not only just you see, physically you see, attend, no. but also you, you really, you see, they're showing your involvement. That's very good. So thank you very much. And then in the future, I think this kind of work, I think definitely will, because of that, Continue. because of that, mm -hmm. will, will grow, will grow, definitely. Thank you. Thank That's you. all. And then also, of course, the concerned, sort of the concerned people, organizer, you see, they also, you see, have the help immense, so I very much appreciate. Thank you.